Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem and they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said, a nobleman went off to a distant country to obtain the kingship for himself and then to return. Then he called ten of his servants and gave them ten gold coins and told them, engage in trade with these until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and set a delegation after him to announce, we do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining the kingship, he had the servants called to whom he had given the money to learn what they had gained by trading. The first came toward and said, Sir, your gold coin has earned ten additional ones. He replied, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful to this very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. Then the second came and reported, Your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. And to this servant too he said, you take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you, because you are a demanding man. You take up what you did not lay down, and you harvest what you did not plant. He said to him, With your own words, I shall condemn you. You wicked servant, you knew I was a demanding man, taking up what I did not lay down and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return, I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by, he said, take the gold coin from him and gave it to the servant who has ten. But they said to him, Sir, he has ten gold coins. He replied, I tell you, to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now as for those enemies of mine who did not want me as their king, bring them here and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today would have been the 87th birthday of our fourth bishop, Archbishop Oscar V. Cruz. At the end of our Eucharist, we are going to bestow for the first time the Oscar V. Cruz Awards for the Catholic faithful in this Archdiocese. And Monsignor Bravo will take care of naming the first four awardees. Archbishop Oscar Cruz was a luminary of his time. And uh, we in the church, when we were young seminarians and young priests, there was only one word that was connected with Archbishop Cruz, tribunal. It was impossible to imagine Archbishop Cruz separated from the tribunal. But his tribunal went through different transitions. The first of his tribunals was the matrimonial tribunal. 
it was the tribunal of applying church laws to marriages as a way of relief, as a way of pastoral care. Tangin cheek, jokingly, he would say he was better than God because the Bible says what God has put together no man should separate but he says Oscar Cruz can do that his tribunal was the application of church laws and he assisted people in conflict in crisis even priests in crisis in order to get relief for themselves and for their souls. But the second tribunal of Archbishop Cruz was the tribunal of public opinion. That he was not only a judge, he was not only a doctor of jurisprudence in an enclosed court. He was also there in the tribunal of public opinion. That is why the Oscar V. Cruz Awards is also called Gawad Salt and Light, Salt and Light Awards. Because his mission was to bring Christ to society. In the combat against sweating, in the war against corruption, in the battle against dishonesty, the battle for public integrity, it was a different kind of tribunal. In the first tribunal, he applied the law. In the second tribunal, he was not always popular because he was called many names. Paki Alamero, he was called many names, violating the separation of church and state. He was called many names. But he was firm about his voice. He was firm about where he stood because he knew that in the tribunal of public opinion, his call was not to be successful. His call was not to be popular. His call was to be faithful to the gospel, to restore all things in Christ. And after the tribunal of public opinion, Archbishop Oscar V. Cruz has shifted to the third tribunal, the tribunal in the Father's house. And in the tribunal of the Father's house, where all of us will be judged and all sins will be exposed and all secret goodness will also be rewarded. In that tribunal, we do not speak about application of laws. In that tribunal, it is only mercy that trains. The divine mercy of Jesus is the only law in the divine tribunal. We too have tribunals in our lives. The tribunal of law, the tribunal of public opinion, and the tribunal of God's mercy. We honor Him by thanking the Lord for the gift of a church luminary like him. We cannot have another Oscar V. Cruz because he's one and unique in the history of the world. But we can move closer and closer to the example he set so that when it is our turn to face the divine tribunal, the mercy of God will also be given to us. In the, in the tribunal of law, in the tribunal of public opinion, in the tribunal of God's mercy, it is God who is always with us. It is the Lord.